good morning, good morning. We apologize for being late. We are here thankful for God and, and all he does as we get ready to move into our Sunday school. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for allowing us to present your word to your people. We ask that you open up our mouth and release the wisdom of your word to your people so that they can apply it to their lives and grow thereby. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, so, so today is August the 10th. This is 2022. We're going to go to our suggested order of service. If you have your Sunday school books, please turn to the back page. good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is coming out of Psalm 133 and verse number 1. And then the school says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart to which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. That's coming from Colossians chapter number 3 verse number 15. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee. This is coming from Psalms 84 and 4. Praise you the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. That's coming from Psalm 111, verse number 1. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. This is 1 Kings chapter 9, verse number 3. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. This is coming from Leviticus chapter 19, verse number 30. All right. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 18. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart cries out for the living God. It's Psalms 84, verse and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them, uh, I, them also I must bring. They, they should hear my voice, and there should be one fold and one shepherd. That's John chapter 10, verse number 16. Uh, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. This is First Timothy 3, verse number 15. Last verse, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 15. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Praise God again. We're here, Lesson 10. This is August the 7th, 2022. Our Bible basis is coming out of Psalm 146, verse 1 through 10. Psalm 146. Verse 1 through 10, our Bible truth is this psalm praises God for his care for those whom society overlooks and despises. This psalm praises God for his care for those whom society overlooks and despises. Our memory verse, happy is he that the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which executed judgment for the oppressed which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looses the prisoners. This is Psalms uh, 146, Psalm uh, verse number five and uh, verse number seven. Our lesson aimed today is by the end of this lesson, 
we will expi- by the end of this lesson, we will explain how prayer and faith can bring about justice, reflect upon God's role as promise keeper, reflect means to ponder, think about, analyze um, God's role as a promise keeper and to affirm that God has promised to help people who are oppressed. Oppressed is somebody that's been held back. Uh, there's adversity, there's difficulty, it could be sickness, it could be sickness whether it's physical or mental, financial, emotional, those are things that will cause people to be oppressed. And this psalm is telling us that the God of heaven, the true and the living God, will help you through those times. Uh, last scripture, uh, the uh, Bible, uh, background scripture, Psalms 146, verse 1 through 10, then Exodus chapter 21 through 23. And in Isaiah 58. So all those are something that you guys can incorporate to get a better understanding and insight of this lesson as you go back and do your homework and research after today. Our life needs for today. Students will seek God's help when they face unfair situations. When you face unfair situations to understand uh, that God cares for all those who are treated unfairly. God cares about me. God cares about you. Amen. We will, uh, we will learn that we, we can count on God for help when all people fail us. Amen. Count, I can count on God. Amen. You can count on God. We can count on God. The word of God says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother and that he'll never leave us or forsake us. Okay. So with that being said, let's get into our lesson. Psalms 146, uh, verse number one. Psalm 146. Verse number one. You all right over there, Doris? Okay, there are Bibles back there if you guys need Bibles. So you can you can sit where you want and get a Bible and use a Bible if you like. Or you can just sit and listen. It's, it's, it's okay. We're, it's, uh, it's your choice. Good morning, Judy. Judy, Judy. All right. And good morning, Yvette. Good morning, Mo Bing. Glad you guys are watching. Glad you guys are participating in Sunday School. Sunday School is a valuable valuable portion of your Christian walk. Uh, if you go to Sunday school on a consistent basis, you will go through the entire Bible every three years. And if you are a Bible scholar, Bible student, or a Christian, Sunday school is a place that you should find yourself because it's a place to learn the Word of God and to learn. If you love God, then you should learn about Him. Amen. If you're in love with somebody, I don't know about you guys, but if you're in love with somebody, you have conversations you ask them about themselves. You ask them what they like, they, what they dislike, what they like to eat. Um, I was helping one of my clients the other day, and she was asking me about uh, one of my children. She said, well, when is his birthday? I said, and I told her, she said, oh, he's a Virgo. I'm like, no, he's a Christian. All right, because we're not into astrology and astronomy and all that, so as far as that. No, I said, no, no, he's a Christian. She said, oh, okay. And because people come up with these, these whole profiles of a person based on when they were born. I need you guys to understand this. Every person is different, and they're created by their environment, not the moon, the stars, and the sun. Your environment shapes who you are. Okay? And then it's up to you on how you respond or not to what society throws your way. Praise God for his justice. I'm going to share this with you guys because sometimes the enemy will come in and he will try his best to discourage you. Uh, the other day, I was uh, this guy just stopped in front of me. I hit him. I was maybe going mid, maybe three miles an hour. And now he's trying to claim this big old claim that he's missed work. His back is injured. I'm like, whatever. No. I said, but you know what? I was, as I was coming in this morning, I said, you know what? God will take care of that. God will take care of that. So, because some, we, live in, we live in what's called a litigious society, especially in California. People love to sue people, right? That's the world we live in. But praise God for his justice. Justice is, is what, that's what's going to happen. God will give his justice. Amen. <clears throat> so Psalm 146, verse number one. The scripture says, praise. This is, how, this is how you start your whole day off. This is how you start out every situation. The first thing you start doing when adversity comes is praise ye the Lord. When you get the doctor's report, when you get the discouragement, when you get the cancellation, uh, when you get lied on, you get used. The first thing you start off is pra- it says, praise ye the Lord. All right? And then this next part of this verse is you 
actually taking a mental, doing what's called a mental override. Somebody say mental override. Sometimes you have to do a mental override on your reality because if you don't do a mental override, the enemy and yourself will have you focus on your reality. Well, because sometimes people say, well, you know, that's easy for you, but it's not that easy. I'm, no, no, it's not as easy for me either, but I do what's called a mental override. I said, well, yes, this is what the world is saying. This is what Satan is saying. This is what my flesh is saying. But then God's word overrides that. Overrides means it has authority over that. Uh, back when I was a plant operations manager, sometimes we would have actuators and things that were not functioning right. And sometimes they would not respond to the program that was programmed. And so what we do is sometimes we just put a bridge over that. And when that, what the bridge did, did is gave us manual control of the operation so we can still run the plant until we figured out the software or in the program what was going on, why it was not moving at the rate it did. And so what that bridge was there. So what happens is no matter what the computer was saying, it was overridden by the bridge. And so what I'm sharing this with you guys is this. No matter what's going on in your life, the devil can't short circuit you because it's overwritten by your bridge called the Holy Ghost. God overrides you and God overrides Satan, but you have to start off with praising him. What that does is like, okay, God, you have authority. Whenever the engineers or the people will come in, they will ask me, how you doing, Jesse? Good to see you, young lady. Uh, Victor, what we're going to do is well, we're going to put this bridge in there. Well, can, can we do it? So they ask me for permission because I'm the operations manager, plant manager. And so when you are having a, a difficulty in your life, relieve yourself of the authority and say, God, I cast all of my cares upon you and I leave them there. God, I cast all of my cares upon you and leave them there. God, you're in charge of this. All right. Our, our, pro our problem in the Western world is we are so accustomed to solving our own problems or finding other ways to solve problems via, via whatever. We got all types of things these days. We were talking about the homeless people at my job the other day. Today, homeless people get a free cell phone, free medical, free food, free tents, free needles. They get all this stuff for free. And they get a paycheck. They get a check every single month for free. Back in my days when a homeless person was homeless, you was homeless. You had baskets full of cans, baskets full of bottles, baskets full of cardboard, whatever you can recycle just to get enough to eat for that day. I don't know about you guys. I remember when Sister Dolly used to do recycling. We would have cans trash cans and do all stacked up and you take it to the recycle place it's like fifteen dollars fifteen dollars that's the gas it takes to go over there and then you have to send that long line for them to take it and weigh it I'm like but I remember back in the day when homeless people didn't have medical co coverage phones and a check and food stamps and all that stuff they you will see them with baskets full of stuff baskets full of stuff. Now when you see homeless people, they have baskets full of clothes and other stuff because they got money now. They have food stamps. They have medical. They have cell phones. Cell phones. With a better internet plan than you have and you work. I'm not telling you this to go against them. I'm just saying that what the enemy is creating an atmosphere where people don't need God anymore. I remember when I was homeless, I was like, you know what, I thank God that my, that my family didn't know where, that I was, because they would have came and rescued me. I have, I, I have that kind of family, all right? I have that kind of family that would have came and made sure that Victor had a place to stay and a nice hot plate of food. I, had a family, I have a family like that still, and I'm so glad that they did not know where I was, because what I needed to learn when I was homeless is to be humble and realize I can't make it without God. And so this scripture here says, praise ye the Lord, L-O-R-D. This is all capital letters. That means you're talking to the true and the living God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, the, what this comes in is you have to do a mental override over what you're dealing with and still give God praise. That means I'm going to give God praise no matter what I feel like. Amen. There are people that used to go to this church. They were like, man, I don't understand how you do it. You're just so patient. 
and uh, you've been here all this time, and it's so hard. And I said, yeah. I said, because um, this is my assignment. So for, for what I'm saying with you guys is that you have to learn how to, when you are in these situations, it's like, you know what? I'm going to praise God anyway. Uh, one of the sisters uh, sent me this song, uh, Byron Cage, I will bless the Lord. No, I will bless the Lord. It's just, okay, so when, when, you, when you go to church and everybody's fighting against you, just play that song. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. And I saw, I said, she sent it to my phone, and I've been playing it ever since. Yes, ma'am. All right, so verse number two, verse number two, and I invite you guys to get that, get that mindset. I'm going to praise God no matter what. I'm not going to let the enemy stop me because that's his, 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 his motive. His come, number one, he comes to divide, but then he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his, that's his objective. He loves confusion. He loves chaos. He loves adversity. He loves when we yield to our flesh and want to fight back in the natural. He absolutely, positively loves that. Verse number two, while I live, this is what, what the songwriter is saying, while I live, that means what we need to take from it is as long as I'm breathing, we've seen this song, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. I don't know if you guys remember that song, but I love it. As long as I am breathing, as long as I got breath in my lungs, there's, there's going to be a praise on my lips for my God. Because he is my sustainer. He is my way maker. He's my very present help in a time of trouble, and I'm never, ever, ever alone. No matter how difficult life gets, I have a God that has my back, that has my back. Amen. The Bible says, while I live, I will praise the Lord. Then, then it's just like, and again, so they, they put this uh, semicolon back behind it so you can understand who the God they're talking about. I will sing praises unto my God. I was telling uh, uh, one of my friends the other day, I said, you know, uh, most of the time I'm just listening to, because I listen to a lot of apologetics, a lot, because I'm just deep into the word like, every single day. But I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I just jammed some praise music. Now, when I pick you guys up on, on the way to church, I, I do the message. And we do praise music, but when I'm on a daily basis, I don't listen to music. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm what's called an information junkie, all right. And I just I'm, 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 I'm in the Word of God eight to ten hours every single day, all right. That's just my mindset. I'm, I, I'm a sponge for the Word of God. The more I know, the more I know that I don't know. And it's like my, it's amazing, but it's like. While I live, I will praise the Lord. Watch this. I will sing praises unto my God, and I will have my being. Uh, I will have any being. I, I'm going to unpack that in a second. But so when I was talking to the person the other day, I said, you know what? Uh, you need to learn how to get some praises in the worship a few times a day. And I was like, I'm going to do the same thing. All right? Because sometimes we'll give people advice that we're not even doing ourselves. Don't be so focused on listening to the word. Yeah, the word of God inspires. It gives you joy. It gives you revelation. It gives you information. But every now and then, you need to get into that place of worship and praise and just have fun in the presence of God. Amen. Don't make it a chore. Don't make it uh, 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 like so so boring. I, I know most of my, my students think I'm the boring, most boring person on the planet. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. I don't. I don't participate in any type of sports, entertainment, none of that at all. All right? The most conversation I have is at church. I work. I take care of my bills and my responsibilities and my family, and I come to church, and I give you guys what I give you. I don't go on vacations and trips unless it's an absolute necessity. I don't. That's just my personality, I'm, and I'm good with that. I'm, I'm not uh, complaining or bragging. It's just I am old and satisfied. <laughs> Amen. I am old and satisfied. Amen. I'm satisfied. I'm comfortable. I was like, so I, I, if 
I can live my life, the rest of my life, to help, to help as many people along their way to reach their full potential, I'm good. There's nothing else I need to gain. There's nowhere else I need to go. There's no another dollar I need to make. There's nothing else I need to obtain. My total focus for the rest of my life while I'm living is to help as many people as I can to have the Zoe kind of life in the presence of God the way God designed it. Amen. Is it easy? No. But I thank God for that ability. I thank God for that calling. Would everybody appreciate what I offer? No. And everybody don't appreciate you either. But it is what it is. Don't get sidetracked. He said, I will, I will, I, while I live, I will praise the Lord. And this is what you need to do when you go to work at that job you can't stand. Instead of looking at the job you can't stand, I'm going to praise God for a job. I was listening to J. Vernon McGee this morning. He's one of my favorite preachers, J. Vernon McGee. And he was saying, man, he's like, I was uh, down in South Africa in this tribe. Nobody spoke English. They had mud houses, mud floors. Nobody had any doors, but these people, they were the, these were the happiest people on the planet. They was quoting God's word with so much joy. He was saying that while he was there, uh, this little girl came up to him and gave him eight boiled eggs. Eight boiled eggs. And uh, he's like, no, I can't take this. So the missionary translator said, please don't reject their gift. Uh, back in the old days, uh, back a few years ago, we, I, I used to go to a lot of the Spanish services. At the end of all their services, they eat at the end of their service. Well, I didn't realize this, uh, but they take it as an insult if you don't eat with them. And so once I found that out, I said, okay, uh, I'm going to eat a little bit. Then I'm going to take the rest with me. Amen. Because I don't know about you guys, but I like being at home. But I didn't want to offend them. And anyway, back to J. Bird McGee. Um, he says that, he, he said, no, 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 I can't take that. The mission is that please don't reject that because those eggs is everything they have. They have no other food but tortillas. But you are the man of God and they're trying to bless you. And he's like, he, he says, I took those eggs, but I felt Lord and dirt. I took those lead eggs and I ate them. Why? It blessed the people, not him. And he said, when he got back to his house in Pasadena, he felt so ashamed because he, of his ingratitude. Because, again, in America, you got, matter of fact, uh, earlier this morning, I was on my way to pick up the people in, uh, where y'all live, Redlands? Where I, when I went to pick them up, I was, I was on my way, I was like, God was like, you know what? You got all these people in all these foreign countries that have churches. So what I'm going to start doing is bringing them on the camera so you can see how the world actually lives. Because in America, we have no clue what's going on in the rest of the world. Unless you're watching CNN or Fox, and that's all a lie. I, don't, I haven't watched the news since 1995. I have not. Why? I'd rather talk to the actual people that actually live in those places to get the truth. Because you're not going to get the truth from your, your media at all. So uh, we have now have the technology. We spent a lot of money to upgrade the system. Uh, Brother Brian bought another whole, whole other computer. As well. So I'm going to start talking to some of my pastors and see if I can coordinate so we can actually see in those countries what they're dealing with just to survive every single day. What the, what the missionary told the uh, J. Vernon McGee was that's equivalent to an American giving you $8,000. Those eight eggs in that country, that was equivalent. That was a sacrifice that they made. Again, we don't really understand that. We don't comprehend that. We complain if, I don't know, if our steak is not right. I'm not going to stay on an American thing. And it's hard, it's hard to understand the word of God as an American. It's very difficult. And, and uh, because we don't understand the whole culture and the mindset that of the people that God was trying to reach. And so that's why a lot of stuff that you hear from me, you hear because I'm trying to get you to understand the mindset of the minds of the people that readily receive the word of God as God intended it. So yet in America, you have to do a full breakdown analysis, code, all this stuff, so people can kind of get a basic, but you still can't understand other people's lives until you actually live it yourself. All right, verse number three. He says, put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of man in whom there is no help. And what he's saying in this verse is this, don't put your, pre your president, your congressman, your, your, your Democrats, your Republicans, 
your husband, your friend, your boss man. Don't put no confidence in princes. Princes would have been someone that has some type of royal authority. Okay, they would have royal influence which means they could they have the ability to go and talk to the king on your behalf. These are some people that would have been good colleagues. Like today, we, we collaborate with certain people. All right, and sometimes people would name drop. I, I, deal, I, work, I work in what's called the corporate world. And in that world, they like to know, they, they like to, one of the things they like to do is ask you who you know. All right, because I, when I first got the job that I have now, well, who do you know? You must know somebody very important. I said, I know Jesus. Jesus. And I was telling them, like, sometimes on Saturdays, I teach at a Bible college. A Bible college? Like, like that's disgusting. Because in the, to the rest of the world, especially in America, God is disgusting. He's completely disgusting. And the reason why God is disgusting to the rest of the world is because the rest of the world is looking at Christians. And they're, they're judging God based on the presentation of the average American Christian which tends not to be good. But let's get back to verse number three. He says, put not your trust in princes. I'm going to share this with you guys because some of these people have some very good um, communication skills. They're very impressive salesmen, but they're not good people. Politicians sit and practice for hours their speeches. And they have, they have focus groups and they have uh, 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 speech writers and they make sure they say all the right words they have this thing. I'm telling you, I'm, it, it's, so, it's so deep. They, 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 their hand movements, their shoulder movements, their head movements is all programmed and set. When they do this, when they do that, when they do all this stuff, it's all programmed. It's part of that communication skills that they learn by their coaches, their, their speech coaches. These are not sincere people. They're not real. They're coached. And your flesh will have you looking at them. Matter of fact, we're still in 2 Corinthians, almost finished with that. But Paul is dealing with people because Paul had none of those uh, professional skills. Paul was just an anointed man of God called by God to do the great work, work of an apostle. He was not this impressive person at all. His wisdom came from God, so his writing was awesome. But when they saw Paul in person, he was just, to them, this illiterate uh, infidel. Or like this one lady said, uh, a, a bunch of uh, neophytes, right? It's like, wow, because this one lady came to visit the church and said, man, you, you, the members of this church are a bunch of neophytes. They don't know the word of God at all. And I said, well, we're trying. She was like, well, good luck with that. I'm out of here. The word of God says, verse number four, it says, his breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. So he's talking about natural man. So what he's saying, do not put your confidence in natural man, mankind. Because guess what? He's going to die just like you. And when he leaves this planet, all is gone. Yesterday we took the boys. It was awesome. Oh, man, how many people How many people was there? Like 300 something, 400? There's a lot of people there. We took the boys out to the outing and... Uh, but they got up there. It was talking about this guy that has been at the company for 30 years. He died. As soon as they finished that speech, people went right back to their hot dogs and their water and their miniature golf and their golf carts. So, okay, and their prizes. Like, okay, you gone. There was honestly not one person like, oh, that's too bad. Okay, what, what's the number? Because it was having a raffle. Are they going to call my number? I think a couple of the, ki the kids won some things. But that was 30 years. He's at this company. The day after you leave your company, your replacement will be on the way. You can be there 30 years, 40 years, or 50 years. Amen. When I left out the 20 years, the next week, somebody had my job. The next week. Don't get yourself all caught up in all your material accomplishments and who you know and what you know and what they have. Because guess what? Just like you, their life is just a vapor. That's what God calls our life. It's just a vapor. Amen. It's like you take you take and blow your breath on the glass, and then you slowly see it just it'll it'll be like a vapor there on the wall on the glass. Then it just fade away. 
You guys ever did that? Now, I don't know if you, any of you guys wear glasses. You wear glasses. Our back, back in my day, Brother Bill, I see the old, older people, they would grab their, they would take their glasses off, breathe on it, and then they would wipe it off because there was a, there was a moisture there. But it was like, it was there for only a second, and it's gone. Whether you live 30 years, 70 years, or 100 years, I know some 109-year-old people, that's just a vapor. When you think about eternity and life and this world and existence, and don't be so, don't be so important in your mind about your existence, and then don't put so much importance on people in their existence, because the only important being in this earth realm is God. That's it. God and God alone. He is God alone. Is, is, is he alone? Verse number five. This is what it says. Happy is he. Listen. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. So what this verse is telling you is that it, it tells you before, don't put confidence in people, not even yourself, basically, if you look at the, the full and analytical commentary of that verse. But it says, now, but, but now the contrast is happy is he that has God of Jacob for his help. So if you won't help, need help, you need the God of Jacob. Who's the God of Jacob? The true and living God, the almighty God, Elohim, Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. That is God. That is your help. This is Russ's now. Uh, happy is he that has God of Jacob at his help, whose hope, watch this now, is in the Lord his God. Learn how to put all your hope in God, not in you. Your job can shut down. Um, I, back in my younger days, I was a flatbed driver. Truck, I drove trucks, flatbed drive, driver. Most of the companies that I picked up from were steel companies. Those companies are out of business. There's no steel being produced. Back in those days, if you worked at the steel mill, you made good money. The steel mill, the ship. I worked at Boeing Aircraft. I helped build it. Well, I helped build. I supplied all of the products to build the C-17. They no longer build those. All those 5,000 people that used to work in Long Beach, they no longer have jobs. It's gone. Down in, this, in Long Beach, they had they was called the shipyard. It was there. People made a lot of money. It's gone. There are a lot of companies that are closing down. And, and, and if you have a job, be thankful for that. But listen, your support and your success and your substance does not come from those jobs. It comes from God. Amen. I'm serious. I mean, I've seen, I, I, I've seen, I've seen this happen. When I first got out of the Marine Corps, I worked for a place called Terra Data. Teradata was part of NCR. We built we built optical mainframes and computers, and, and 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 we were back in those days. That was a nice job, all right. That was the only equivalent to uh, what was that company that went that went bankrupt? That the, the copier company company. I can't think of the name of it. Not IBM. But what was the other one? I can't think of. What was that Xerox? Xerox. Yeah, man. Xerox was there on that level, and Ben. Next thing you know. They was laying people off left and right, left and right, left and right. My company was like, we were, <coughs> we were shipping all this stuff. We was making these mainframes. We had just, we had just moved from an analog to an optical new database. And this thing was like this big, was like this, this big, this wide. And it was awesome. And they was wrapping these things up, putting them into 18 wheelers, and they were just moving them from El Segundo down to Long Beach to the warehouse because they had, they had no more customers. But they put the image of, though, hey, we had the greatest quarter, and we're doing great. And we had people that was buying their stock. And then six months later, that stock was worthless. They called me down to go down to the, this warehouse. And I, I walked in this warehouse. It was all this stuff. That, and I'm going to tell you, we would work overtime to finish wrapping this stuff, getting it all set up. And this what the trucks to take out because we thought we were actually doing something valuable. And we get down, I'm serious, we get down there and all this stuff that we spent hours of overtime to ship out the door is just sitting there. And now we had to sit there and analyze it, chronologue, chronologue, chronologue all this data, and they were just going to take it and put it in the trash. I'm like, man, this is kind of strange. I wasn't aware of what was going on. All I know is I came in two weeks later and they started calling people into the office one at a time, but they never came back. They didn't come back. 
They were firing us one at a time. They brought you in the office, gave you your final check, and say, we're closing down, going out of business. Goodbye, thank you. That was it. And some of these guys, seriously, some of these that like the job I work on right now, that job is their life. Most Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Amen. And so without a job, you just one step away from being homeless yourself. You want to look down on homeless people as though they're less to you? You better be careful. Amen. Because at 28, I had everything a black man could ever want or desire. At 29, I was completely homeless. Homeless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's possible. Don't get beside yourself. But yeah, look, through it all. But back to this. Happy is he that has God of Jacob for his help, whose hope in the, is in the Lord, his God. I'm going to tell you this, brothers and sisters. No matter where situation you find yourself, how bad or how bleak it may appear between you, your mind, and the devil, there's nothing too hard for God. Come on, say, there's nothing too hard for God. Good to see you, Mother Robinson. It's awesome to see you, girl. You're looking good, too. Like that hat. Amen. You're looking kind of kojic over there. The Bible says in verse number six, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein, which keep it true forever. And so just in case you needed a reminder of who this God is that we serve, this is the God that made everything. And listen, if God made everything, God can handle you and all of your issues, all your problems, all your adversities. And I need you to understand this. Also, God can handle Satan. That's the Satan that you created and the real one, too. Because a lot of times we create all this power for the devil as though he's somebody powerful. No, the devil belongs under your feet, period. Give no place to the devil. He has no authority over your life. You have the full armor of God. You have the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in, this wor in the world. The devil is in this world. And so is your mind. So guess what? God is greater than your mind, and God is greater than Satan. I need you guys to get this because I, have, I, I deal with so many people that are afraid. Oh, you can't say that out loud. The devil going to capture this. So what? Get it. You got to pray in tongues so he don't understand. Look, I want you to understand what I'm saying. What are you praying that you don't want the devil to hear? You should be praying God's word and God's will. The devil has no power over that. Boldly speak English, if that's your language, and say, this is what God says, and this is what I believe. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. We need, listen, I'm going to tell you this, brothers and sisters. If you're walking around in fear, you're not going to have any praise or worship. He will shut you down. You'll start saying, oh, oh, great is our God. Right? You're stuck. But when you get the power of God, how great is our God. It's a boldness. Sing with me how great. Book you up, our Coco. Is our God. Sing with me. And that's power. And you should speak with power and authority. Now, you don't have to be angry and fussy or argumentative. But at the same time, you should be able to pull your shoulder back, hold your head up, and look people in the eye and talk to them. Have some of my people on my, that some of my students, they'll try to come up to you and have like a staring contest and try to stare you down. I'm like, I already have a job. You're trying to get one. I'm here to teach you. You're not here to teach me. Back up, right? Just chill out. Maybe you'll get a job. Maybe. When you go to God, don't go to God like you own or God owes you anything. Go stare at God in the eye. No, you better come to God with a humble heart. Look, like, God, I'm coming to you as humbly as I know how. I'm your servant asking you, Lord God, to help me. You know, we have, they, they, have, they have these ministries. Like, no, you just call God, hold him to his word. You tell I'm like, no, you guys got the wrong posture. And that's why you're still stuck. Well, you are because you're coming to God with the wrong presentation. You come before the, not just a king, but the king of kings. And see, we don't understand this in America because we don't understand if, when you, went to, if you went into the presence of a natural king and if he didn't like what you presented, he can kill you on the spot or have somebody chop your head off. We don't get that. 
We're going we're gonna to remind God of his word. I'm going to hold him to his word. I'm gonna do, no, you know who you think you are. But there are people that teach that. God is not short. God is not, uh, God is, listen, God is not some old, old guy on the throne that you just grab and lead him where you want him to go. I'm going to just tell God. I'm gonna, God does not have a memory problem. When you repeat God's word, it's for your benefit and not for his. You're not holding God to his word. You're holding yourself to God's word. If you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. How do you delight yourself in him? You learn him, you pattern him, you imitate him, you do his word, and as a result of that, your life becomes blessed. But God does not need your quoted scripture to bless you. God needs your yielded body. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, your reasonable service. But let's move forward, move forward. He said, who made the heaven and the earth the sea and all that therein, which keep it truth forever. Verse number seven. Which executed judgment for the oppressed. That's us. All of us have some things in our life, whether it's mental, physical, financial, emotional. We have some things. I shared with you guys, I think a week or two ago, one of my emotional uh, struggles I deal with is rejection. I, I have a difficult time with that because my spiritual gift is helps. I love helping people. So I get joy out of my, my joy is every single day, every single day from 4 o'clock in the morning until about 7 o'clock at night, I get to help people. Whether I'm helping them learn a skill or I'm helping them with their future or helping them retire, helping is like this. It's like, it's, it, I get a lot of joy out of that. Then when I'm at church, to me, I'm not, no, I know people don't, may not appreciate it, but from my perspective, I'm helping people to understand God's word as it was written so they can apply it to their lives appropriately so it can get the results that's needed or expected. Um, I have students that they will go, <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna move forward, but I have students that I, we teach them how to do things, and then they go ahead and they invent their own way. They say, well, this made more sense to me. I said, don't come into this school inventing your own process. You're gonna, you're gonna fail the test. Because when the examiners see your steps that you're doing, they're going to start marking you off on points because you're doing all the things incorrectly. Now, you may accomplish the goal, but you're going to accomplish it wrong. And so a lot of times people are in the mindset, I just need to accomplish a goal. No, you have to accomplish it the right way. And see, God has a way called holiness. God only has one way. Somebody say one way. He only has one way. Lean not to your own, own understanding. Don't try to, I mean, listen, there's, a lot, of, there's a, a lot of things that make sense to Victor Nolan's flesh that does not line up with the word of God. And same with you. If you're honest with yourself. Amen. The Bible says in verse number seven, which executed judgment over the press, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looseneth the prisoners. God will supply your need according to his riches and glory. God will supply all of your needs. Uh, listen, uh, the days I'm a, the days that I went hungry was when I was homeless and I was not in the presence of God. Since I became a Christian, life has been very difficult at times. But I never went to bed hungry, ever, not one time. Not one bill went unpaid, not one obligation, not one, not one time. My God always made a way from the, from the time God opened the doors of this church until now. Every single need has been met. How it's done, I can't tell you. God does it. Exactly what we need, God provides. Our very first church that we had was free. They gave us four vans to drive for free. They put gas in it for free. Guess what? Our offering was only $50. Our next place we got was $300 per month. It was a karate studio, $300 per month. Well, guess what? Next thing you know, our offering went from $50 to $600. That's, well, you know what? We need a van because once we moved from the, the, the daycare center, we needed a van. So we, needed, we went and bought a, 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 a church bus, church van or whatever. That thing was $494, I think, and it cost, back in those days, back in those days, it cost like $60 to fill it up. It was a big Ford excursion. Big, it was a nice, very nice thing. It was nice. Did you ever ride in that? Did you ever ride that Ford Excursion? Oh, no, you don't remember that one. But uh, you drove in there, right? Okay. <laughs> but, but it was like, it was nice. But guess what? 
God provided. And it's like, and everything. So we stayed at the karate studio, and I, and I was working 12 hours a day, and I had to come back. Sometimes Sister Nolan, some of the ladies, they had to come back and just, because we, we had to take the whole church apart when we left. Every chair, the carpet on the floor, all the instruments, everything had to come out there because on Monday morning or Monday afternoon, by, by Monday at 1 o'clock, they would have karate in there. So all of the church stuff had to be out. But guess what? On Sunday morning, all had to be set up. I was like, man, I can't handle this, Lord. This is way too much. So I went, uh, I went around the corner. There was a Seventh-day Adventist church. Seventh-day Adventist church over there. I said, uh, I said, he said, oh, yeah, Dr. Pastor Lola, we love, we heard about you, man. We love the rent to you. And uh, I said, okay, good. I said, well, uh, how much is the rent? He said, uh, $1,500. I said, well, $1,500? We're barely scraping by with $300. I was like, man, I sure want this place, but I don't have $1,500. He said, well, Pastor Nolan, I love you, brother, but uh, $1,500 is a price. When you have $1,500, come on back. Went back to the church the next Sunday. I said, look, we moving. What we move to? The Seventh-day Adventist church. I was moving over there. God's going to make a way. $300 to $1,500. We walk in there the very next that, that we walked in there. It was a couple of Sundays later. Boom, God provided. People was coming out the woodworks. We were sitting there one Sunday morning, and because um, I don't know if we used sound, I can't remember what we was doing, but we was just in there singing and having a good time. And this guy walked in, sat on the front row, because he heard that we we had a church in Fontana. And he just raised his hand and said, "Hey, can I play the organ?" I said, "Yeah, man, get on that organ." That dude jumped on that organ. Next thing you know, this guy was buying food for all the youth group, taking them on trips. And I'm like, whoa, thank you. And then he was just so happy to be there. We didn't have to pay him not one dime. He was so happy to be there. God provided. And we stayed there as long as we could. If it was up to me, we would stay there a lot longer. But I had a congregation of some people that were not really cultured. And they couldn't handle that nice environment. So... They were tearing up stuff, Mother Robinson. <laughs> I said, well, Lord, we need our own building. So uh, I was just driving around, went to this, and I, 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 that's where I found this old abandoned, jacked-up warehouse over in down on Valley. And it was horrible. Back, it was just needles, crackheads. They had cl that club back in there. It was horrible. It was horrible. And the guy was like, well, you can have this place over here for 3000 you can have this place over here for two thousand. You can, and it's like he just like because everything was abandoned. It was all to refree, it was jacked up. And I was, my brain was like, I really wanted the three thousand dollar place, but I was like, like you know what? We moving, and I, I got these people here. Let's get them into something that they can't tear up. And the place was nice. It was very nice. They just didn't have, like, this place here. It don't have all the additional room. It was nice. It was nice for church. It was a nice, big, nice building. God bless us with these nice. I mean, that place looked like a royal hall in there. We, it, was, it was beautiful. It was nice. Uh, and, but it's like, we just, we just outgrew it. And next, I was like, you know what? Then I, I said, well, let me find another. So I, I came over to this place, and, and uh, this place was jacked up, too. It was a, a recycling place. It was horrible. Everything was falling apart, wires everywhere. It was a disgusting place. And for some reason, God told me to have the church come with me. Because normally what I would do is I would go find a place, make it nice and pretty, and say, and then have the people come and say, here's the church God has blessed us with. That was, that was my normal procedure. No, this time, I, no, they came in the parking lot. They came through the doors. There wasn't no light. They looked all around like, Lord Jesus, what, what, I don't know who pastor to listen to because I don't think this is Jesus. I mean, it was horrible. I know y'all ain't gonna admit y'all said that, but <laughs> that's the look. That's the look that was on their face, right? So I go back to that pastor from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and I said, "Man, we got to move. I, I, I found a place." He said, "You know what, Pastor Nolan? I never cast any of those checks." He says, "Just tell me what you think you owe me, and I just I'm gonna give you the and just." The rest is yours. Right? I think it wound up to be like $15,000. We took that money and, and did all, I'm serious, like boom. Like, and, and it's like God provided. The city wanted us to, to, to do a $60,000 modification in this place. 
$60,000 just to get our conditional use permit. So we the Sister Nolan started getting involved with the uh, outreach, uh, the reentry program. I started getting involved with the city council, getting on the mayors, and all of a sudden, all those 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 people who was like block. I mean, they were blocking us. They did not want a church here. We first came and told them we want a church. No, we don't want your kind in our in our city. They didn't want us at all. As a matter of fact, I think I took I took most of you guys to that city council meeting. I told them the kind of members we had. I said, "Oh no, we don't want none. Of, no, we don't want none of those kind of people in our city." <laughs> so we had to wait a whole other month. So we're paying we're paying rent in this place because we had already signed the lease, and we're still paying rent over there in a place that we didn't have it. We was like, "But guess what? God provided." Anyway, they wanted sixty thousand dollars. I'm going to this because this is part of my lesson from what my from my blessing from God, who helped me in this oppression. Like I don't. There's no way possible we had the sixty thousand dollars. They came back and get, you look on the wall back there, we have our, we have our permit. You look in that window in my office, we have all of our certificates, all our permits, all our conditional use, everything is in place. And we did not put $60,000 in this place at all. God did that. Amen? Amen. They wanted the parking lot painted a certain way, and it was going to cost $5,000 to do it. I was trying to get with Brother Brian, trying to figure out how can we paint these lines. Then they call me and say, hey, uh, Dr. Nolan, make sure the parking lot is clear because we're going to redo the parking lot. I came back in the next day, Brother Bill, all the lines, it was black, all the lines, the handicap, everything that we was, we was trying to scratch our head on how we're going to get it done, it was done. I'm serious. God did that. And we need to learn how to just trust God. Stop trying to figure things out. God, is, God has already worked it out. We just, we just need to learn how to shut up and trust God. We are, this is the, the problem in America, i got to close. The problem is America is we're just too dang old smart for our own good. We know too much. We need to get to that place where we just trust God. He is the way out of no way. The very present help in a time of trouble. Watch this now, verse number eight. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. And bowed down can be coming from being over. It's like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to this place of being depressed where you don't even want to look at your own self in the mirror. But God will raise you up. Huh? You go to people, I have, I have people, I have some of my students, they're, they're so broken down. They don't, they don't look at you in the eye. I'm like, man, hold your head up. I remember... Anyway, let me move forward because I'm out of time. But I just remember those times when I was just bowed down in the spirit and God just like, and I had to remind myself of the word of God. The Bible says, the Lord loveth the righteous. Verse number nine, the Lord preserveth the strangers. And again, we don't understand that word here in America because it's not, it's not really significant to us. Because so what, you're a stranger. But in those days, if a stranger came into your village or your city, they were totally, completely ostracized. There was no help. There was no hope. We don't understand that. But God preserves the strangers. He relieved, he relieved the fatherless. Again, fatherless and the widows. America, we don't understand those two things. A fatherless person and a widow was a hopeless person. Zero hope. That was nothing. But the way of the wicked, he turned it upside down. Last verse, the Lord, said, the Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Then it starts. So, so if you look at this lesson, it's, it starts with a praise you the Lord. It ends with a what? Praise you the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure why the scripture was not on the screen, but we will make sure we rectify that situation to a situation if, it, if the situation bothers you. But situation is so that you guys can, can see the screen. Good. Hey, sister, my sister Sylvia. Oh, good to see you, girl. Judy, Nicole. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you share with your friends. God is blessed. Praise for God is justice. And God will sing you through our lesson. By the end of this lesson, we explain how prayer and faith can bring about justice. Reflect upon God's role as a promise keeper and affirm that God has promised to help people who are oppressed. God will help you. Amen. Come on, say, God's got my back. And I'm straight. Amen. I know that's a street term. Amen. But I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm straight. It's, I, I, it's, it's a blessing to be alive. It's a blessing when people uh, recognize or see or whatever what God has done in your life. Um, it, uh, in my current life, it's like people know my business within three minutes. 
It's like they, I don't know what it is, but they make, they make sure that whatever Victor does, everybody in the company knows. So guess what? They get to see good things because I work our stuff to God. Amen. All glory goes to him. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a private person. I'm not into people I'm all knowing. But people, I have people that Google you, research you. They start asking all kinds of, who is this guy? Why are you working here? They think I'm an undercover boss. The corporate sent you over here to spy on us. I'm, that's the mindset. Like, I'm like, no, I'm just an employee just like you. How'd you get this job? Who do you know? I know Jesus. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> but you know, I don't laugh in their face. I laugh to myself, and it's like, cause you guys have to, you, have, you, you guys have to be there to hear the hear hear the, the way they respond and to see the looks on their faces. These people in America, too, it's, it's too, it's, people can't stand God, especially Jesus. Now you can have God. But you can't have Jesus as God. All right? We was at a, at a wedding here a while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and their God was a female. Their God was a female. And they called her Yah. And the lady, I, I didn't even catch it. Uh, Sister Nolan brought it to my attention after, after, the, after the wedding. But the lady, the lady that was up there was like looked like a, a witch doctor, like and y'all says this, and y'all says let's just feel the positive energy of y'all. And I had been to a wedding last year, and they were spreading the sage, and they sound the same. But I think I don't know, I don't know if their guy was a woman or a man. I don't know, but they was. It sounded similar. But God is neither male nor female. Our but. But what the, our image of God is Jesus Christ, and he is a man. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, wisdom is referred to as she. But in the Bible that I read, like you can go read, read, you can rewrite your Bible if you want to. That does not make it true. And change he to she. And make him from big God, only God, to a God. You can, you, that's your prerogative. It doesn't make it true. Amen. He is the only God, and his name is Jesus. Amen. You can call him Yeshua. You can call him Jacob. You can call him Hosea if you want to. His name is Jesus. And that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. So if things are not moving in your life the way it should, come out with all these fancy words, Yah, Yeshua. No, just say Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great, great day. Um, uh, I, God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. As we dismiss from the Sunday school, Lord God, we ask that your power and anointing to be upon us for the praise and worship. We thank you for your clarity and insight. God, we thank you, God, that you are the God of the oppressed or the people that's being dejected, rejected, or criticized or put down. God, you're on our side. And we just thank you as God. As, to, as we cast all of our cares upon you and leave them there, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have an offer for Sunday school, bring it at this time. We're going to get ready for praise and worship and our morning service at 945. Amen. Be blessed.